Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Wenbo. Welcome back. And this video, I'm going to start a new video series. It's called Tough Questions for Wenbo. So I'm constantly getting questions from my YouTube subscriber and there are some really good questions and there are some tough questions. So I want to utilize this video series just answering some question that I feel a little bit challenged to directly answer while typing it out. This would be a good, fun and interesting video series to just let you guys to engage and ask some questions. I will try my best to answer these questions. All these answers and thoughts are just my personal opinion. Hopefully there are some really good insight that help you to get your creative mindset going on and uh, get some fresh idea. So just chill, right? This is just one way we're communicating, right? Right? Okay, now I'm going to answer some tough questions on this channel. Wish me luck. Finger crossed. All right, question number one. Hello, I wanted to ask you a little personal question. Feel free to not answer me. Well, I'm answering to you right now. Uh, I have always wanted to make a YouTube channel focus on Blender and Archives. I would like to know your value proposition with the channel. If you use it to nourish your brand, to sell, or as the main source of income. Thanks so much. Well, this is a really good question. It's talking about my personal income. Ooh, I have to answer that. So the first is the, the proposition of the YouTube channel is basically it's a channel that I can reach to more audience. I used to be a freelance to running my small business and uh, as a product photographer in town in Sydney, it, it was really a service based uh, business model. And now I'm really merging myself to a content creation field in the creating a lot of videos and tutorials and uh, the digital products like my courses online to sell them to make some income. Definitely this is not my main stream of income uh, because I also working for a different company at this moment, this stage. So this is something I want to catch up with you. And at the same time, I still onboarding my clients on a very slow basis, probably one new client a month. So I have to really filter out to working with a client that uh, value my work and also uh, I would love to work with them too in order to provide the best of service I can do. So it's kind of mixed. I'm not really rely on one single uh, income resources. However, if you guys love me on YouTube and uh, get more viewers and supporting this, I probably will become a full-time uh, YouTuber. So because I'm using YouTube and people are viewing it and uh, they just get to start to know me uh, internationally as long as they have access to the internet. So I think this is a really good channel to not just kind of building my brand. It's also kind of like a good marketing tool to, to let people to know what I do and just sharing fun of doing it. Most importantly, inspire more creatives who will also join into this creative space to chase their dream. All right. Second question. Is that okay to have two different portfolio for different types of jobs? Should my art portfolio to be same as my, I assuming Archie? Well, oh, I understand now. It's architecture visualization portfolio. So a lot of 3D artists that do that as a different thing. And which one should I use my real name or business name or art name? Whoa, let's answer one by one. So is that okay? Have two different portfolio. Absolutely. Yes. Why not? It's like you doing your resume. You need to have different, different version of resume according to the job that you apply. So why not? If you have a, a really broad a body of work that uh, you have not find your niche yet. Yeah. Per creating something similar to a particular niche as your portfolio. And uh, some of that just architecture visualization renders, you said stay with that. Some of product renders just stay with like, like that, put in that folder. So when you apply, when you show people, you definitely can have two different websites. However, the thing is, it will be also the challenging thing is, is that well, your information or your website is going to be across on the internet. If you are a potential employer to actually doing the research to, to see your portfolio, they found two different style work or two different business, they might say something on their, during the interview or they may decide to try hire you, you do both. If they are only looking for uh, one expert in certain areas, very specific, that probably gonna turn you off. It's like, for a photographer. So if you're a photographer in town, you said, well, I shooting weddings and same time I shooting babies and same time I also shooting products. Like you are doing multiple things. And uh, 
Well, people who are looking for experts, they're probably not gonna hire you because if they are lo really looking for high-end jewelry uh, product images, then your 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 niche or your expertise, you cannot go in there uh, as an expert. So they probably not decided to hire you. So that works well for either your 3D artist and product photographer. Speaking of the names, that my business is basically my real and personal name. I know my mom or my family is gonna freak out. Why are you putting your name out, the real name out as business? When you're doing business online, you don't have to have to use your real name. So it's gonna bring a lot of trouble. The reason I decided to using my real name for my business and also on my online presence, it's I just trying to building the trust. In this way, I'm actually do taking quite a bit of risk because people will know my personal name and they can search my information i know it's kind of scary but same time but actually putting myself out there to be transparent to be open to really show my face to building the trust uh, with my audience this is something i'm looking forward to it as well so it depends on what are you really want to do and how much risk and how much uh, things that you can take in when you're actually doing uh, working uh, online and as a creator based on the question you're doing now I think you are basically looking for a job or to building a portfolio online to seeking potential employer who working with you as a freelancer so I think the real name would be better it would be pretty easy to engage in the professional level uh, or if you are going to be a full-time content creator I think you don't have to have a uh, real name to to actually deal with that people just need to know you as what a art name or a fake name whatever to know what you do it depends on what you really want to do so again i the reason i take my name is because i start my business first and then i get into this content creation uh, field so there's no way i can change my name around so this is just what it is all right question number three let's see uh, hi, Wimbo. Good morning. Good afternoon, sir. Wimbo, I'm feeling discouraged to continue. Oh, this person actually came from my 30 days modeling challenge. So I'm unemployed and I have been unemployed for a long time. I was hoping to make a living out of this skill set as quickly as possible. I feel overwhelmed. So many niches, I don't even know what niche to focus on. I, I feel you, bro. Uh, this is something that I have struggled so much at the beginning of my career. When actually moving away from the United States to start my business in Australia here as a freelancer and product photographer, I have no ideas what I want to do. And uh, there are, I have met or networking locally quite a bit to knowing photographers in here. And there are a lot of photographers who are in town are not doing product photography. They're doing weddings, they're doing portraiture, corporate headshot. This is something that I also tried, uh, but this is something that uh, is really challenging to quickly give you an answer that what niche should you focus on. My suggestion is to test them all as best that you can possibly do like i said in the, my creative my side videos and, and a lot of artists or creatives who are struggling running a freelance business because we are really into our craft we're really into our uh, creative process we don't know too much about networking sales and marketing a bunch of stuff that uh, is not something that uh, we are really comfortable to handle, especially finding a niche or market that you want your business to start taking off. It takes time, patience, and also good understanding of perspective of what the current market is really needing. And I would say definitely test your local market or even try to start a YouTube channel or a TikTok, Instagram account, just to share your work and to reaching to people, asking questions to figure out what really needs in this. Uh, if you also very creative and your, your work's really good, can helping some other business owner to solving their creative problem, then I believe there are chances to do that. But I have to be super honest, this process take ages. So my YouTube channel took me about almost two years to just getting to where I am now. Think about the two years I've been uploading videos and nobody, nobody's watching. And this is kind of like a soul crushing. But I want you to have the mindset that if you really want to convert your skill set to money, it's super challenging because uh, 
the lot there you have zero data about what the real world actually needs based on your skill set. So you have to test it out and you have to be patient. If you are in the mindset that you really overwhelm, you hate the process in doing this as a creative, I would highly suggest you to getting a side business or get a part-time job. There's no shame of doing a job to getting money to pay your bill. This is not, nothing shame about it. It just takes time and it just, it's just a painful process but if you can hang in there and keep going, you should be able to do that. It takes time to really building the traffic and uh, reputations and the business into you online. So uh, it just depends on what you really truly want to do. So making sure you test both local market and also online market to find a way to transform your skill set into a sustainable money making business. All right and I wish you the best of luck. Question number four. This is a long question. Uh, do you consider your work as art or craft? Do you think it's more important to be creative even if you don't have proper hard skills or you think that is more important to repeat, intimate after you have strong hard skill and ready to create creative things? For this question, for this long question, uh, I would say I consider my work is more close to the craft side of it. I still remember the first art class when I actually studied back in the US. The professor actually asked us to writing a something or piece of paper to explain what is art. And the funny thing, I thought we would have a standard answer at the end of this semester that she never gave it to us but it actually trigger us a lot of way to think about what is art. And people thinking, well, you are a photographer or you're not real artist. The real artist was supposed to be a painter or illustrator or uh, you know a sculptor. Uh, you're just using a camera or even using computer to generating some images out. I don't treat all my works as art simply because the way I see art is need to be providing some sense of value. Uh, it can be commercial value, it can also be some emotional value when viewers to watch that or look at it. So it is something that if your work cannot produce this type of value to your viewers, to other people, I would say that just a work. Don't get me wrong, they are artists out there, they're just creating artwork for themselves to really nourish their soul or their creative process. And I, I respect that. I'm just not a type of image creator that only creating works to for my spiritual purposes. I need to having some sense of a commercial value out of it, or maybe potentially some emotional value for my viewers on social media, on the internet. So this is kind of how I see it. I see it as a craft. That's why why producing my videos and tutorials, I'm really focusing on the reputation and building the skill set uh, as a craftsman because you need to really hunting your hard skill in order to express or to creating that connection between your viewers and your work uh, in the better way. Because without the hard skill, ideas and concepts can be very open. So the viewers cannot instantly connect to your artwork or just work in general. I see myself as a craftsman, but if my work really providing value for business, for viewers, then they'll become a piece of art. So I would like my clients, my viewers, my audience to judge, is that a piece of artwork or is it just an image? So there's a difference. Again, these answers are just trying to help you guys to think a little bit different. And I just put my personal input and perspective to helping some creatives who are also in this space. Hopefully this is very helpful. Okay, now the video is getting way longer than I intended to go. So I'm going to stop there for this video today. Uh, so please feel free to leave your comments and questions regarding uh, 3D rendering, Blender, freelance, product photography. Is anything that uh, you think Wimbo can possibly answer? Well, probably I could not really answer, but that's why it's called tough questions for Wimbo, right? Uh, I think this is really fun to get some ideas to flow between you and me. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. And uh, if you like this type of content and if you want to see my work, feel free to follow this channel and subscribe, please. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye.